exponential equations and inequalities. Why don't you please get out your um, thing that we made yesterday, your foldable? Okay. We may refer back to it today, but you might as well get used to having it on your desk because if you accidentally have it the day of the test, you might accidentally get to use it. Okay. So mine's just over here to the side. I can refer back to it in a minute if I need to. Okay. So here's two examples that we're going to go through first. All right. So the first case is the bases on each side are alike. All right. The problem that we have right now is that your variable is in your exponent. We can't just pull it out. We can't just magically make it vanish out of the exponent and be right beside the number so we can divide and get rid of it. It's up in the exponent right now, right? Mm -hmm. But tell me this. If 3 to this power equals 3 to this power, shouldn't these two powers also be equal? Mm -hmm. So if I have the same base, if I have like bases, just like this, I can just straight up say 2x minus 2 equals 6. Oh, sorry, I was using a pencil. 2x minus 2 equals 6. Okay? Well, gosh, how do I solve for x now? That's easy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Add 2 to both sides. 2x equals 8. So x equals 4. four. Is it true? 2 times 4 is 8, minus 2 is 6. Does 3 to the 6th equal 3 to the 6th? No. And, okay, he said no. All right, so example number 2 is different. Example number 1, I had like bases. Example number 2, I don't. I don't have like bases, okay? So... The base on this side is 3. The base on this side is 1 ninth. Is there a way I could rewrite one of the bases to make it become the other base? My negative exponents? Yeah. 1 over something would become a to the negative whatever that was, right? So can you tell that 1 over 9 is really 1 over 3 squared? And if this has a base of 3, can't I write this as a base of 3? Yes? Okay. So if I rewrite this side, I get 3 to the 2x minus 2. And if I rewrite this side, I get 3 to the negative 2, don't I? Because like we, like we talked about yesterday with the negative exponents, if, if it's 1 over 3 squared, it's the same as 3 to the negative 2 power. You remember that? Yes, sir? Uh, why did you say the exponent came not came with negative 1? Uh, because I need it to be a base of 3. I didn't just leave it 9, because I could have written 9 to the negative 1, right? That's what he's saying. I could have written 9 to the negative 1 power. But I needed a base of 3, because this side has a base of 3. That's where I yes. That's where I got the squared because three squared equals nine. So you just do whatever you can to sign it. Yes, it absolutely. Okay. okay. I got it. And now, since I have like bases, guess what I can do? Two x minus two equals negative two. Add two to both sides. Oh my goodness, two x equals zero. I must have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. You know how many times I hear that? You guys, just because you get something like zero, or especially like a really big number or a really small number, you just automatically assume you did something wrong. Yeah, yeah don't do that. Okay? Because look what happens when we put x equals zero in. What is two times zero? Zero, zero minus two? Negative, negative two. What is three to the negative two power? One is it nine. one over nine? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's right. Okay, so let's try one of these that are not examples. Let's solve one of these equations. You choose which one I do. Six? Okay. So this is 1 over 25, and this has a base of 5. Anybody see anything similar, things that we can work with? 25 is 5 squared. So this would be 5 to the negative 2 equals 5 to the x minus 5. 
If I have like bases, shouldn't the exponents also be equal? Negative two. Yes, please ask me a question. This negative two? Yeah. This has to be a negative two because our rule is about negative exponents. Oh, okay. okay. If it's in the denominator, in order for me to move it to the numerator, I have to make that exponent negative. Okay. okay? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Are you lying? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So if I add five to both sides, x equals three. Is that true? What is three minus five? Negative two. What's five to the negative two power? One over 25. It's right. Choose one more for me to do. Number two? Yeah. Okay. So this has a base of two and this has a base of eight. Do you think I'm going to change the one that has a base of two or a base of eight? Probably the base of eight. If I'm going to change this, I want it to be either this base or a base that they might share. In this case, can't I write 8 as 2 to the 3rd? Yeah, absolutely. 2 to the 3rd equals 2 to the 3x minus 4. So if the bases are the same, their exponent should be as well. So 3x minus 4 equals 3. So if I add 4 to both sides, 3x equals 7. And if I divide both sides by 3, I get x equals 7 thirds. Oh, I must have done something wrong because it's a fraction. No. no. Okay, good. Because 7 thirds times 3 is 7, 7 minus 4 is 3, 2 to the third power is 8. Yes, we got it right. Okay. Questions? Turn the page. Exponential equations can also be solved using tables and graphs. Okay? Also, they can be solved using tables and graphs. So, I'm going to get my calculator, which we all have on our desks. Can somebody grab him a calculator, please? Let's go with 11. Yeah, I think he's number six. Okay, so I'm going to open a new document. Not save the old one. And I'm going to put this, the left hand side, into y1. So it's going to be 3 raised to the 2x minus 4. See how 2x minus 4 is all in the exponent? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hit enter. What's going to go in y2? Or f of 2? The other side, right? 3 squared? Or I could just put 9 because I know what 3 squared is. Either way is fine. Oh, I must have broken it because I can't see it. Oh, we have to fix the window. Okay. So I got to go menu, go fix my window on number 4, my window settings. It's really the, the Y max that I can't see, right? Because that's 9. So it's y equals 9. So we probably make the y max 12 so we can be sure to see it. Okay. So what am I looking for on the graph? If I have one side and that's this logarithmic function, I mean this exponential function right here, and I have one side and that's the line right there, where are they equal? Where they intersect. Okay. Do you remember the keystrokes to find the point of intersection? Um, if you don't know, what should you try first? Three. How about menu? Yeah, yeah. We want to analyze it somehow, so number six. Oh my gosh, look at intersection. A lower bound, what the heck does that mean? It means I need this line on the left-hand side of where they intersect, like the lower part. When I get it on the left-hand side, I press enter. Or, and then it says upper bound. Mm -hmm. What do you think that means? On the right-hand right side? Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Mine is kind of hard to see. Is yours kind of hard to see? Yeah. There's going to be some times that you can't see it at all. I moved my little cursor. Do you see the little hand? It's like this. It's almost like a Lego hand, right? It's, it's like, let me grab something. If you'll hit control and then that middle click button, it the hand just went like this. And I can take it and I can drag it and click. Again, now I can see what it says. Does that make sense? So the point of intersection is 3, 9. What does that point mean? Okay, and what is, why do we care about the 9? So when, when the x value, because what are we trying to solve for? x, okay? When they're both 9, it was when the x was 3. So the answer, x, is 3, because that's the variable we're trying to solve for, okay? Yes. We try a table, okay? How would we find a table? Oh, control T, okay, control T. And how would we know what to look for on our table? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by main points? So what we're looking for is where X and, I mean, where Y1 and Y2 are the same. Okay. So probably two above and two below. Is that fair? Okay. So when I go to transfer my table, it's going to look like this. X, Y1, and Y2, or F of 1 and F of 2. And so I need 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 1 for Y1 is 0 0.1111, obviously repeating, right? And then 1, and then 9, and then 81, and then 729. Y2, wait, wait. Is mine broken? No. Why do they all say 9? Because you only put 1. What was the equation I put in right there? 9. So why all of my y values are going to be 9 because that's what I told it. Okay? So I need to circle in the table where the two y's were the same, and the x will be my solution. Okay? Look at number, look at the examples right here on the top of the last page. Okay, notice there's nothing on the back of that second page. Look at the top. Example number five. Okay, how is example number five different from the other two examples? It's an inequality. Okay, so you know me, I gotta have colors, right? Colors help me. Okay. So let's think about this. I'm not going to show you in the calculator because you know how to put one side into Y1 and one side into Y2. We just did it, didn't we? Okay. It's the same table that we just had. It's the same graph that we just had. Now we have to interpret our results. When is this side, wait, which one was this? Was this the curve or the straight? It's the curve. When is the curve less than the line? It's like this, right? All this stuff right here is when it's less than the line, correct? Yeah. Okay, so where do they intersect again? I mean, is that even really important? Yeah. Yes, they intersected right there at 3, 9, right? But everything to the left of that point is below that line, isn't it? Yeah. Everything less than that point. Pardon? Underline. I'm not worried about that. And guys, that's the answer. I mean, that's the work. Now, you're going to have to create your own table. You're going to have to get your own table or at least get your own graph for sure. Um, and if it helps you to color in the part that's actually less than, I, I did a disservice to you by actually coloring in that dot with green. It's just this part right here, all this stuff right here, right? 
okay not the part above here psh, 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 that's bad okay but it is everything to the left of that point so that's everything less than the x value of three does that make sense yeah. okay so i did two and six with you correct yep. okay so turn back to the front please you're gonna do one two and four how about if, if I say one, three, and four, since that's what I circled? One, three, and four. I apologize for that. I would like you to do also, how about this? Don't do four on the front, unless you want to, unless you want the extra points, okay? Because I want you to do instead number seven. What do you notice about number four and number seven? They're the same problem, right? But on the front, how are we solving it? Algebraically, and how are we solving it on number seven? With tables and graphs, okay? So do number seven, also do number nine, and do number 10, okay? Of course, number eight and number five and number four are extra credit, okay? But I'll only be checking those two on this page those two on this page and that one on this page. All right? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. On number three, uh -huh. they, both, they both have a variable in the algorithm. Like same way. Yeah, same way. No, but when you get the four that you've been switching, uh, when Tristan gets four. How are you going to start that one? What's it going to look like? What base are you going to use for number three? Probably a four. A four? So this is 4 squared. Oops, 2 minus x. So yeah, you'd have to distribute that 2 into there. It's, it is a multiplier. Okay. okay? Very good question. Now that's a good question. Okay? Any other questions? Okay. Wait, how am I supposed to sign off? Kingston out. Kingston out. Do I have to do deuces also when I do that? Well, I was actually looking at the first one, so I guess we can do that. Kingston. Oh.